All right. Hey there, everybody. This is Cards and Dice TV. This is Tony Porter, and this is Deep Drive Baseball 1971. It is the Washington team versus the Oakland Athletics. And it's the Senators. I, I have a tendency to call them the Nationals. That's why I kind of um, hesitated for a second. I sometimes call them the Nationals. Um, but in 71, they were the, the uh, Senators. So uh, where are we in this game? We're going to show you how to play a game that is really a ton of fun. It reminds me a little bit of, uh, well, it's got a little bit of a lot of things in it, but it reminds me somewhat and more and more of Status Pro without all the charts, without that big game board. You know, everything is pretty much, it's pretty much chartless except for the um, uh, errors and range checks. So let's see, where are we here in this game? We are in the top of the sixth. It's going to be Bernie Allen, uh, Don Mincher, and Frank Howard. The score in this game, and I'll show you. I'll show you what I got going here. Um, as you can see, the Senators have a couple of runs. It was a solo shot by Casanova and a run that scored on a double and an RBI single later on by Tim Cullen. But... The Oakland Athletics have be, really been uh, uh, hammering the the Senators' pitching, and um, we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the score right now stands at eight to two, and the Athletics are up. The Athletics with a record of thirty-six and twenty-four, and the Washington. Senators are at 22 and 35. And uh, the starter, Dobson, is still in there for the athletics. And let's get that to happen. Dick Green made the last out. Chuck Dobson can go 11. And I'll show you how to do that. That's his endurance is 11. And the cool way they do it is that you add up all the innings. That's four innings. Gave up at least one run. That's five. He gets 11 points. You start off with 11 points. Then you add the innings. One, two, three, four. Plus he gave up at least one run. That's five. How many times has he gone through the lineup? Twice. That's seven. So 11 minus seven. He still has four more innings to go, so he could uh, um, theoretically – he's not going to be able to finish this game. Yeah. Unless he pitches three uh, nine outs consecutively, then he would get a plus one. So uh, – and then I would – or I could even let him stay in and just be he'd, – he'd be uh, kind of uh, tired um, in the ninth inning. I could let that happen as well. Let's see what happens. Let's play it. And here's a roll. You roll 3d10. You read the red first. So that's a 37 and a 6. And a 37, I know. Wait, let's flip these over because you usually read, uh, I read the batter first from left to right. So it's going to be a 36 falls in the out range. And then a 6 is going to be a chopper to the second baseman, a green, who throws out Allen one out. All right, so it's 0 to 49 off the batter and 50 to 99 off the pitcher. That's going to be a 20. A 20 is going to be a base on balls. Don Mincher shows some patience and walks. He's on a first. One out, one on. And Dobson checks the sign, checks Duncan. He's behind the plate today for the athletics. And it's Frank Howard, the Frank Howard. Yes, sir. -y. Actually, you can go on YouTube and listen to his last game. He gets a huge standing ovation from the crowd in Washington. Here's a pitch. Oh, that's trouble. That's a deep drive off of Frank Howard. That three tells us that it's within the home run range of the ballpark. You can see zero to seven. We rolled it. That green three tells you. So this is a deep drive off the bat of Howard. Gets into one. And let's see where that goes. We're going to roll, and we're going to roll off the deep drive chart. This is one of the cooler things that this game has, offers. And that's a 90. And from 95 to 99, it would have been a home run. But a 90 is going to be off the top of the wall and bounces back in to the playing field. Mincher is going to stop at third and into second base. Ahead of the throw is Howard with a, a 
deep drive for a double. And that puts runners on second and third now for Larry Bittner. And Bittner reached on a double himself in the fourth inning. So Dobson has himself in a little bit of trouble here, but uh, the lead is pretty big. It's eight to two athletics. So here's the pitch Larry Bittner back from the left side. That's going to be a 39, which is going to be in the out range. And a two is going to be a hard hit ball right at uh, Dobson. And he looks the runner back to third. And he's going to throw to first for out number two. And here's Paul Casanova. So two out, two on, second and third, eight to two athletics. And we are in the top of the fifth inning. We're doing tutorial for deep drive baseball. That's a 21. And you can see that falls into the out range. A one is going to be popped up. Left side of the infield, the captain, Bando, is over there. And he puts it away for out number three. All right, here come the athletics. Athletics were always a team that kind of uh, generated uh, some excitement for me. I was I always saw them as being a team that was willing to try different things, you know, with the uniforms and and that sort of thing. So it was always exciting to to see them play. And then the great teams they had that made it even more exciting. So whenever they played against the Yankees, I used to love that. As a kid, I was a Yankee fan. As an adult, I'm more of a Met fan. Um, all right, so let's see. It's Denny Riddleberger, and he can go this inning because he only went um, one-third of an inning so far. He can go two innings. So, so far he can pitch this inning. He's going to pitch against Dobson. Hey there, David Chopin. Wow, hit this as you started the telecast. Yikes, sounds like a 1938 game score. The real plus to this game is having the uh, sequences on batter pitcher make it flow very fast. Exactly. And he's making the, he's actually making the game better now. He's, uh, you know how uh, um, he's going to make, he's really making it more like status pro, to be honest with you, where he's going to put in the wild pitches and, and the on-base events are going to be within the roles. So you won't have, like every time there's a base runner, I won't have to roll or do a separate roll. You know how I do that D20 to see if I roll a one? I won't have to do that anymore. And I actually changed it already. I made it on the on the uh, batter card of 48 and a 49 is going to be with guys on base. It's going to be an event check and a 98 and a 99 on the pitcher card is going to be an event check as well. So that's already written in. So I could write that in event check and event check. And that's what's going to happen. He's doing that to all the cards and that's going to really make the game flow because you won't have that extra additional row. And he's coming out with 1961 as well. So this is super exciting. Basically, this game is one of the um, really undiscovered gems in our tabletop hobby. It's a lovely game. It, it's very simple. Yes, it has its, its detail. It has its nuance. It's very straightforward. You get results right away. The cards are super easy to read, as you can see. And that's why I want to do a tutorial right here. So um, I don't know if I roll, but we're going to roll again. It doesn't matter. All right, it's a 77, so that's going to be off the pitcher. Remember, 50 to 99 is off the pitcher. A 77 is going to fall within the strikeout range. This guy, Denny Riddleberger, had 56 strikeouts in 69 innings. So he's a good strikeout pitcher for this period, right? And he strikes out Chuck Dobson, who's not a really good hitter anyway. He batted, uh, well, not too bad, 197. You see his batting average right there, 197 and 76 plate appearances. All right, here's Bert Campanaris. Bert Campanaris, single to start off the game. I got all the stats. The stats are actually really close. Let me give you some stats. Uh, this is June 15th, so I'm playing a game June 15th. And let me look at uh, Bert Campanaris is batting 247. And in reality, he batted about 250. So he is he is right there, okay? And uh, Joe Rudy's also batting 247. Actually, with he's 0 for 3, so he's around probably 240, 242, more like 242 right now. 
and he batted around 250. So they're all around where they're supposed to be. So, I mean, in terms of um, accuracy, it's it's looking good June 15th. And by the way, you got to watch uh, Vita Blue. Vita Blue is, I think, 11 and three with an 060 ERA. This was uh, one of this was the big year for Vita Blue, where he had a 170 ERA that year. All right, so it's going to be Bert Campaneris. See what happens. See what Bert can do. And that's going to be a 16. That's going to be off Bert, and that's going to be a defensive check. All right, so we're going to quickly roll again. And a 93, we're going to look at the defensive chart. These are all. These are not all the charts. There's only two charts to look at. Here it is, a 96. You look at a 96, you can see that there. A 96 is going to be, oh, unless the guy's a five, it's going to be a two-base error. It's hit to the center fielder. Center fielder is going to be Dell Unser. So Del Unser, let's see. Unless he's a five, it's going to be a two-base error. And he is a four. Just missed getting to that ball. Bobbles it, and it drops to the floor and, and uh, to the field. And hustling around second, uh, first and into second base with a two-base error is the speedy Bird Camp and Harris. All right. And this is the second error of the day for the Washington Senators. First error happened, it was on a catcher error on Casanova in the second inning. So there's one out, runner on second, and here's Joe Rudy. Joe Rudy needs a hit to keep his batting average, you know, uh, right around where it should be. And that's a 30. That's not going to do it. That's a four. That's actually a hard hit ball to the third baseman. So he's going to look Campaneris back to second, throw to first in time. So two out. And here's Reginald Martinez Jackson. Jackson is two for three. Got a bases clearing double in the fourth inning. In the fourth inning, the A's scored one, two, three, four, five, six. Hey there, Shanghai Steve. Uh, I just ordered Appa today. I got myself uh, 1908. I've been looking for that. You know, I'm reading the book. It's called Crazy 08. Um, it was the book was recommended to me. And uh, I've been reading it, and it's a great, great book. And uh, so, but it's it's really a dense book. It's 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 got a lot of great material in it, so you can't rush through it, because the person who who kind of did it is is kind of scholarly, so they actually gave you a lot of detail. So it's not a book that's easy, you know you're not going to fly through it. You really is a book you can read multiple times, you know. So. And RJL is in the house, always amazing. The work that he does on his channel as well. Now he's replaying 1976. That's always good to see. Let's go Mets. Uh, that was the cannon throughout a runner trying to steal, Trevor Story trying to steal, steal second base to end the game. That was great. So anyway, yes, that was a good game. All right. So here, going back to our tutorial. And uh, so I'm going to be playing 08 with APA every so often as well. And like I said, Deep Drive is re, uh, reconfiguring the cards, making it easier to play so you don't need an extra roll. And, um, and he's also uh, redoing his PDF so they're easier to cut. And he's coming out with 1961. That is the big, you know, the big season for the Yankees. Um, DiMaggio and, and – uh, and, uh, Garrick and uh, what's his face? Not Garrick, uh, DiMaggio and uh, well, whatever. Anyway, not really my my era, but uh, all right. Let's see. Reg Reginald Martinez Jackson against Denny Rillberger, lefty on lefty. It's a forty-two. That's going to be off Jackson. The seven tells us that's a deep fly to right field. Back goes the right fielder Bittner to the track and makes the catch to end the inning. So Jackson gives it a ride. And um, that retires the side. And that's going to be no runs on no hits. The error, they leave a man. And uh, we go to the top of the sixth inning. That's going to be it for Riddleberger. He's going to be out because he can go two. I can always pitch him an extra inning to show you how the endurance works for this game. Pretty simple. There's a couple of things that are kind of – Outside of the norm, they're not standard, so guys have a little bit of an issue with it, like endurance. It's not your typical endurance. It's just not batter's faced. 
It's a little bit different than that. All right, so here's Toby Harrow. Toby Harrow is actually one of my favorite ball players. Uh, I felt he had a little power, a little speed. He was a kind of a, 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 a guy who hustled. You know, th those are the, usually the type of players I liked. That's a zero one. That's a deep drive off of Toby Harris card. I don't know if you can see that. There it is. Um, so that's going to be a deep drive. Let me push this in a little bit so we can see a little bit more of. There you go. So it's a zero one. So that's going to be off the deep drive chart. But the eight says that if we see the, the dagger, the dagger symbol, see that little symbol? If we see that, if, if the roll falls within that dagger symbol, which is up here, zero to eight to 80, 89 to 99, it will not be a homer. It's going to be an out. And what kind of an out? It's going to be a ballpark out of a fly ball to center field. So the ballpark effect also plays a role in this. So let's roll and see what happens. That is a 79, and that is going to be a fly ball. Doesn't fall within the 89 to 99. It's going to fall within the 75 to 99, which is a deep fly ball to left field. So he pulls one deep, but right there is Joe Rudy to put it away. We're in the top of the sixth inning. It's 8-2 to two athletics. Here's Tim Cullen. Tim Cullen is 1-2 for two today with an RBI single in the fourth inning. And that is a 19. A 19 is going to be off Cullen. That's going to be in the out range. We look at the zero, and that's line and caught. Oh, nice catch by Dick Green at the right place at the right time. Two out. And now it's the pitcher spot. So we're going to pinch hit, and we're going to bring in a guy named Frank Fernandez. He's with the team. Frank for an actual, yeah, pretty sure. You know what? He may not be with the team. Hold on a second. Uh, I got to look at something here. Uh, he may not be with the team because the June, this is June 15th. This is the trading deadline. And I, I found him pinch hitting after June 15th. So he has a Chicago uh, Cubs card. So he may not be with the team. So I got to quickly take a look. He pinch hits on the 16th of June. Let me see if he shows up before the 16th of June. So I'm going to do that real quick using baseball reference. All right. On the 15th of June, which is today, it's Tommy McCraw and Elliot Maddox. So we're not going to use Frank Fernandez. I have a feeling he's not with the team till tomorrow. So I'm going to use Elliot Maddox here to pinch hit. And we're going to get rid of that Fernandez. And we're going to write in Maddox. All right. Pinch hitter, and he's pinch hitting at the top of the sixth. And then who are we going to bring into? Then we're going to have Joe Grizenda. Joe Grizenda is going to pitch. He's the third pitcher of the day. All right. So it's Chuck Dobson versus Elliot Maddox. Two out, top of the sixth. A's are up 8-2. to That's an 87. That's going to be off the pitcher. 87 falls, and it's a four. So we look at the four, and it's granted to Campanaris. It's short. Campanaris gloves it, fires the first high throw. Nice stretch by the first baseman, Epstein, the super Jew. And that retires the side, no runs, no hits, and we move on to the bottom of the six. More Oakland A's action. Love the A's. Actually, in my I, in my inside pitch league, I own a couple of of uh, I, I have Vita Blue on that team. I have Sal Bando. I have Joe Rudy on that team. I have a bunch of Oakland A's on that team. I love the A's. All right. Here's uh, J Joe Grizenda going to pitch against Mike Epstein. Lefty on lefty. That's a 38. That's going to be off of let's switch these around because it's 0 to 49 on the pitch on the uh, batter. So 38 is going to fall within the out range, and a 2 is chopped to the first baseman, and he steps in, on the bag right ahead of Epstein, so one away. Have any questions about this game? Let me let – me, uh, let me know. I've been playing this game for a while. 
So I feel pretty comfortable with most things. Not perfect. You're never going to see anything perfect coming off, off from this channel, that's for sure. And uh, endurance is pretty interesting system, though. I like. Yeah, well, it's actually one of my favorite endurance systems out of all the games that I play. And I'm gonna. You're gonna see it tonight. I'm gonna show it to you within the next couple of innings. So we're in the bottom of the sixth here. There's one out. And it's Sal Bando. Sal Bando today's 0 for two. He's walked and struck out. Remember, Bando had always had a, a very high on base percentage, always around 400. He bat second for me in my inside pitch league. He's a heck of a ball player, always on base with either a walk or and he has power. That's a 56. That's going to be a little ground ball and through the left side for a base hit. And what is Sal Bando batting? In reality, he batted 271. What is he batting in my replay? He is batting 260. So in reality, he batted 271, and the replay is batting 260. So just 10 points off. So that's pretty close. Here's Rick Monday. And here's the pitch to Monday. That's a 15. That's going to be off Monday, and that's ball four. Grisenda loses Monday, and that puts runners on first and second. Now, if the second runner is slower than the first runner, which is not the case, that would be a potential uh, triple play, but there's, there's already an out. But there would also be a potential uh, five to three double play as well, I think, in the game. Not a big deal. All right, here's Dave Duncan. Now, Dave Duncan is three for three today. He started off the day at 210. He was a 253 batter, so he's been struggling, but a three for three day probably puts him in the 225 range. So first and second, and let's see what happens. Here's Dave Duncan. He's probably going to make it out here. Oh, that's a 14. That's ball four, so that's going to load the bases. So Grisenda struggling with his command. And the bases are loaded with one out here in the bottom of the six for the Oakland Athletics. And we are going to – Dick Green is one for three. And he's batting 211. That probably raised him to about 217. And he batted 244. He's a little bit under. And right now I'm going to pinch hit for him. Yes, I am. I'm going to pinch hit for him. And I'm going to bring in uh, another guy to play second base, a guy that I kind of bring in often. I like to have a couple of guys that I use consistently so I can I can know who my main guys are. Um, let's see. What's his name? i got to find him here. And you get every – by the way, you get every card. You get every card, so you don't have to worry. If you want to do actual lineups, you can do that with this company. You, have, you will have to go into the other teams to uh, – to find certain guys, I don't see the guy that I need just because I don't know what I did with him. Larry Brown, there he is. That's the guy who's going to pinch it for Dick Green. Just something I do to make the game a little bit my own. I do use actual lineups. So these are all the guys that we're playing. So Brown, and then he's going to come into pinch hit, and then he's going to stay to play second base. All right, bases loaded. Larry Brown's up, one out. Here's the pitch from Grisenda. That is a 16, and that is going to be an out range. Oh, no, I'm sorry, a 56. I read, I read it wrong. 56 is going to be a base hit off Grisenda, and that's going to score just one run there. Monday is going to hold up. So that's an RBI, and he drives in number five. I put the number of the batter he drove in, and I put a little circle around that. That's kind of how I do that. Bases are loaded. It is 9 to 2 now, Athletics. And here's Chuck Dobson, and that's actually going to be it. He gave up a run, plus he went one inning. So that's going to be it for Grisenda. So Grisenda now has reached his endurance. He's used up his two points, which means we're going to play him fatigued. So this is an opportunity for you to see the fatigue system. Um, there, and, and basically, he can go two innings. So he, he not, not two innings, but he gets two points. Right, he gets he gets he's allowed two points. You you lose a point if you give up a run, at least one run. So he lost a point by giving up a run in this inning. He also went one inning, so that's his two. So he went one inning, that's one point, and he gave up a run, that's two points. So he's reached his endurance. So every batter from this point on, um, he's gonna be he's gonna be tired. So the cool and we're gonna see. I'm gonna show you how, exactly how to do that. Anything off the pitcher card is gonna go to the batter card. That's basically how you do the endurance. Pretty simple. So let's do that. Let's roll for Larry Brown singled. So 
So he did a good job there. Dick Green was out. And now it's going to be the pitcher, Chuck Dobson. Oh, yes, of course. Anything you see on my table often, but there's some games that are really good that I just don't get around to, to playing them because some of the games that I do play, I like so much. So, you know, it's it's tricky. It's hard to say, oh, well, he plays this game all the time, so that's his favorite game. Uh, it's one of my favorite games, and maybe another I could really like another game if I had enough time, but I don't have enough hours in the day. This is going to be a 65. So that's going to be off the pitcher, and a 65 is going to be a strikeout. Big strikeout for Grisenda to get out of a bases – well, to almost get out of a bases loaded jam. Now he's got to deal with Bergkamp and Aris. Bergkamp and Aris is one for two today. Bases are still – oh, wait a second. Uh, 65. I See, I forgot all about endurance, guys, when I start talking – all right, so it's not going to be a 65 because Grisenda's tired. So from a strikeout, it's going to go to 15, and 15 is still going to be a strikeout because it goes down 50 points. So 50 points from a 65, 65 minus 50, my math is still okay, not great, but I think it's 15, and 15 is still a strikeout. Had it been, um, man, had it been a 68, it would have fallen on a defensive check. So it does make it, and that could have been a base hit, or it could have been an error. So, you know, it does make a difference. So it's still going to be a strikeout. We're going to move on. Oh, actually, I'm looking at the wrong batter. <laughs> there you go. It was, it was against Chuck Dobson. So it was 65 minus 50. That's how you figure out. every Everything that lands on the pitcher's card is going to be minus 50. So it goes to the batter's card, which, which gives the batter an advantage. And that becomes 15, and look at that. On Chuck Dobson's card, it is a defensive check. So I'm glad I took my time to look at that and I didn't rush through it, which I have a tendency to do. All right, so we're going to roll on the defensive chart, see what it says. And that's a zero, a 20. A 20 is going to take us, the defensive chart on a 20, 0 to 36 is going to take us to the range chart, which is that one right there. So we got to roll one more time. And that's going to be a 24, and a 24 is going to read. It's to the second baseman. And if he's at least a three, it's going to be an out, and it's going to be a fielder's choice. If he's a two or less, it's going to be a single, and a run is going to score. The second baseman is Bernie Allen. And I don't know what Bernie Allen is, but we're going to find out because I don't write that stuff down. I don't really. Bernie Allen is a one. So that's going to be a single plus, which means two runs are going to score on this base hit through the right side into uh, to the outfielder who's out there, picked up by Larry Bittner, and that score is Monday. And after that, oh, Dunk, wait a second. Duncan is at second base. They may hold him up. He's a slow poke. No, with two outs, he's a slow. That becomes an average runner and an, an S+. Plus. He will score. So a two-run score. And Larry Brown, I believe, is at least an average runner. And Larry Brown is an average runner. There's nothing there. So he's going to make it to third, first and third now. So it's a two-run single by Burt Campanaris. And he's two for three today. He drives in Monday and Duncan. That is six and seven. And up comes Joe Rudy with runners on first and third. And that's going to be it for Grisenda. He's out. Enough is enough. Enough. No more pain or just not for Grisenda. At least we're going to send him to the showers. And he scored two more runs. So that's 11 to 2 today. So we're giving them a whooping, right? Uh, 24. Yeah. All right. So. Um, Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Chuck Dobson. That was off Chuck Dobson's card. Let's. We got to fix all this. This is totally wrong. Totally wrong. That was Chuck Dobson batting. Chuck Dobson singled, drove in two runs. He drove in uh, six and seven. Because remember, it was a sixty-five, and I went back. And it was a 15. It was a 15 on Dobson, and the 15 was a defensive check. 
So I had to backtrack because I forgot to include that he had, he, we had to check his endurance. So now it's Campanaris, and now we're going to bring in a new pitcher. That's enough. Enough is enough. And the new pitcher is going to be Paul Limblad, who is going to be, uh, was a, an, an, an Oakland athletic and will be again. So that's kind of interesting. Paul Limblad. So Limblad comes in, and he can go two. And he's going to face Bert Campanaris with runners on first and third. There's one out. So the infield is going to be back because we're losing by a lot. That's a 0-3. That's going to be a base hit. Another run comes in. That's number eight scores. Campanaris is on at first. Chuck Dobson, unless he's very slow. So then wait a second. Oh, also, Nay, hold, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Because then there wasn't two outs, so Duncan didn't score. But he's going to score now. So why did I just do that? Wait a second. He just scores. Larry Brown then went first and second. And on this single, the, the single plus he will score. Larry Brown will score. Uh, and, and Chuck Dobson is going to go to third, maybe. Let's see what he is. He's fast, so he does go to third. Holy smokes. All right. So now it's Joe Rudy. Joe Rudy's coming up. Paul Lindblad is fresh. And here's the pitch. And, oh, that's a 0-4, another 0-4. And that's a deep drive off the bat of Rudy. And lucky for Rudy, we rolled a 7. And on the ballpark card, that's going to be in the home run zone. So when you see a dagger, it's still going to be a home run. We're going to roll again 0-22. to And 88-99 to is going to be a home run. So let's see what we roll. Joe Rudy with runners on first and third. Here's a pitch from Limblad. The drive is a deep drive. And that's going to be one hop off the wall. And that will score Dobson. And Burt Campanaris, who's very fast, will score as well. And that's a two-run double, his first hit of the game. He's one for five now. But he will drive in number nine and number one. So two RBIs for Joe Rudy. And the hits and runs keep on coming. It's 13 now, 13 to two. And here is oh, lefty on lefty. Uh, nope. Had to be a lefty specialist. If Limblad was a lefty specialist, he would have gotten a, an advantage. No advantage there. All right. So uh, Reggie Jackson's up with a runner on second base. Still only one out. Score is 13-2, to two, Athletics. That's a 44. That's going to be an out off of Reggie. And that is chopped to the second baseman, which will allow Rudy to make it to third. And again, the second time in the game, the Athletics have batted around. And it's going to be Mike Epstein with two outs. Yep, let me double check. One out there and one out there. Two outs. And it's Mike Epstein. Here's the pitch. That's a 90. And a 90 is going to be an out. A four is going to be hit hard up the middle. But getting there is, oh, wait a second, Tim Cullen. I don't see that well. So let me see what Tim Cullen was. Oh, wait a second. Oh, my God. Yeah. All right. So that Tim Cullen gets there and throws him out. And um, so what's interesting is that I never – I. It looked like Tim Cullen uh, was was playing third base because this score sheet that I'm using is Digi Dugout, and I've w when I did my my uh, my score sheet um, video, the top ten, whatever you want to call it, uh, I mentioned that one of the downfalls of the Digi Dugout score sheet is the size of the numbers, for example. I don't know if you can see that, but they're really, really small. So sometimes when it's between the, there's a lot of stuff going on here and between it's a four and a five or four and a five and a six, it's hard to really read. Then when you look at sometimes when you put this far away from you, if you don't have great eyesight like I do, this third base looks like a second base. All right. So that made us look at Bernie Allen, who's a terrible third baseman instead of Tim Cullen who is a great second baseman. 
and I may I used his his number. So we gotta we gotta do a lot of repair work here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Um, and that repair work comes off of this hit here. So we're gonna go back. We gotta go back in time. And I'll and just for a split second, we're gonna go back in time. We're gonna erase a lot of stuff that happened. And uh, we got to see, first of all, it was an out, that range check where I said, I think it was like a 93, I believe it was. No, it was to the second baseman. And it was going to be, he had to be at least a five. Right? I'm pretty sure it was to the second baseman. Because I remember looking for a second baseman. I thought that Bernie Allen was playing second base. I'm pretty sure. And um, and I saw he was a one. So it, it had to be – he had to be uh, a five, and a five was going to be a double play. So Dobson actually hit into a double play. And only in that inning, instead of all these runs scoring, really it was only one run that's came, that came in. So he doesn't score. Right? So it's no big deal. We fixed it already. So really only one run came in in that inning. Oh, there was two outs, and the bases were loaded. So that's going to be actually, uh, let me see, one, two, three. He walked. So two runs come in. So he drove in number five and number six. Oh, no, no, it was one out. It was one out. So one run comes in. One run came in in that inning. All right, so we're going to continue here. So we got to re-correct the score. The score is going to be nine to two. So it's going to be um, and it's going to be a double play, a four-six-three double play to end the inning. And so it's going to be one run on two hits. And we go to the top of the seventh. All right. So we so some of that stuff didn't happen, but that's okay. That's fine. At least I caught it. Again, it looked like to me the third base looked like the second base. And sometimes I just write over it. I write it nice and big because it's really small. I don't know why they're saving space. There's no reason to write it so small. Check the box. You got plenty of space in this box. Look at the size of the name. It's like a six font. Why are you using a six font? Do you look at all the space you have on top and bottom? You, you still have a space in the bottom for another player, for a sub. It's not like I can fit anybody in, else in here. I mean, in here I can write in another guy, right? And then, of course, the numbers are super tiny. Sometimes I'll get mad and I'll just be like, I'll be like, one, two, three. Come on, make it a little bit bigger. Look, look at all the space you're leaving over here. Come on. You put so much effort into this, this amazing, you know, um resource and it's a beautiful website they just redid their whole website but they still leave this this tiny you know miniature so if you know i don't know how to get the hold of those guys i'm gonna try to get a hold of them but come on i mean half the guys that are using this playing 1971 how, you know they're in their 60s so all right so at the top of the seventh is going to be del unser chuck dobson still having a good game he's retired five in a row Let's see. Ah, B.R. Wells, evening all. Non-cluttered cards and ease. Yes, B.R. Wells knows exactly what, what it is. He knows the deal. Deep drive uh, baseball. That's a 35, and that's a one. That's going to be a, a pop-up to the right side of the infield. And over is uh, Brown, Larry Brown, covering for Dick Green. He makes the catch. That's one away. Next is Bernie Allen. This place. This plays very fast if it wasn't for me talking all the time. A 91, that's going to be an out, and that's going to be a ground ball to the shortstop. Campaneras can't be up with it. Fires the first and in time to get Bernie Allen. And here goes uh, Don Mincher. Don Mincher today is two for two with a walk. That's a 56. A 56 is line. Base hit right field. So Mincher is three for three and a walk today. He's looking good. So his bat is hot. And it's Frank Howard with two outs. Frank Howard is one for two. He hit into a double play, walked, and doubled. 
There's a pitch, and that is a 67 and a 67. And strike three, and he gets Howard swinging to retire the side. We go to the bottom of the seventh. No runs, one hit. Score is nine to two, Athletics. Remember, the, the Athletics are 36 and 24 in my replay. This is June 15th, 1971. And I've been talking about all the batting average, how they're pretty darn close. Like Campaneris is batting in the replay, he's batting 247. In reality, he batted 250. Rudy's batting 242. In reality, he batted like 250 as well, something like that. Bando batted 271, and the replay's batting 260. So most of the guys are right around where they should be. All right, we are going to the bottom of the seventh inning. And it's still uh, Paul Lindblad is in there. Paul Lindblad came in. Um, it was a new pitcher. It was Grisenda. Grisenda struggled. And, ah, you know what? Paul Lindblad never came in because it wasn't until Chuck Dobson's hit that I brought in Lindblad and Chuck Dobson hit into a double play. But he did use up his, his endurance. So uh, I'm going to start off the inning here, the top, the bottom of the seventh, with a new pitcher, Lindblad, Paul Lindblad. All right, and he goes on the right side because you read the batter first and then the pitcher. This has, of course, the 50-50 the uh, Stratomatic. So if you're a Stratomatic guy, you, you, you'll, you know, you'll be okay with it. It, has, it still has the 50-50 thing, but it has, you know, it has a twist, 50-50 with a twist because then you get the deep drive chart that can come off of either one. That's an 83, so that's going to be off a pitcher. Remember, 50 to 99 comes off a pitcher. That's an 83, and the three is a ground ball to the third baseman. Bernie Allen, yeah, I thought he was the second baseman before. All right. So Campanaris grounds out, one away. Here's Joe Rudy, who hit a double for us, and that was he lost the double. And that's a 90, so oh, that's a 99. So if there was somebody on base, 98 and 99 would be a, an event check. That's a new thing that's being put on the cards, but I'm doing it with my old cards. Remember, these are PDFs. So a 99 and a 7 is off the pitcher, and a 7 is going to be a fly ball left field. And right there is Frank Howard. Two out. And here's Reginald Martinez Jackson, number 9. And uh, he is 2 for 4 so far. Here's the pitch. See if he can hit one out. Nope, not with a 41. That's going to be a hard hit ball but to left field. And right there is Frank Howard to put it away to retire the side. No runs, no hits. We go to the top of the eighth. So innings can be played super fast. So this is good to play replays. If you like replays, it's like it plays as fast as Appa, probably the fastest playing game around. I don't think there's any faster game than Appa. You can play games in 15 to 20 minutes literally with Appa. This game is is a good competition for that. So th that's where it, it you know it, it's like a little it's a it's a smorgasbord of a lot of different things. Larry Bittner against Chuck Dobson. Now let's look let's count up. Dobson can go has eleven points total. He's in the seventh inning, so that's eleven minus seven. Right, this is where you got to do your math. Eleven minus seven. He's given up at least a run, so that's another minus one. And then he's gone through the lineup three times. So that's another minus three. So actually, um, he's he's actually he's going to be tired right now. His endurance is is has been uh, consumed. So um, he's tired. So you'll be able to see anything that lands on Dobson will be minus fifty. So it's going to end up on the batter's card. We're going to let him go an inning um, tired. So you can see how endurance works. So it's a 61, so that falls, it's going to be a base hit on Dobson, but it's minus 50, so that's going to be an 11, that's going to be a single off there. So it's still a single. But if it would have been a strikeout, like on some batter, like for example, Vita Blue, I think on 61 he has a strikeout. So uh, that would have been a base hit. You know, it, it's not always automatic that you're going to get a hit out of it, but it, it does uh, give you an advantage. So here's Paul Casanova. Again, Dobson is tired. That's a 42. That's going to be a two is going to be a slow grounder to the first baseman. That's Epstein. He's going to step on the bag, and that allows Bittner to move to second base. 
And the results are right off the cards. It tells you if it's a slow ground or a hard ground or a medium ground or tells you who it goes to. It's nice. Everything's off the cards, as you can see. That's a 73. That's going to be minus 50, which is a 23. A 23 is still going to be an out. And it's going to be a six, which is a ground ball to the shortstop Campaneris. He flips to the second baseman, Larry Brown, for the fielder's choice. 6-4. And going in hard was Bittner to break it up. So Hara is on a first now. Trades places with Bittner. And there's two outs. And here's Tim Cullen. Tim Cullen, who I thought was the third baseman, it was really the second baseman. I had to fix a whole inning because of that. And that's a 47, a 47 on a one is going to be a pop-up middle of the infield by the second base bag is Campaneris, calls off Larry Brown, makes the catch, and that retires the side. No runs, one hit, bottom of the eighth. Here come the Athletics, score 9-2. to two. So Chuck Dobson, we're going to try to push him for a complete game. How many complete games did he have? He had, oh, it doesn't tell me. It doesn't tell me how many complete games. But he did pitch almost 200 innings. I may, I may, I, I may just uh, bring in a relief pitcher. No big deal. Paul Lindblad can go another one because he can go two innings. It says it in his endurance right there. Let me go two. All right. So let's continue in the bottom of the eighth inning. It's uh, nine to two. Uh, tutorial on deep dry baseball. Very easy to play. It's a 77. That you know, 50 to 99 is off the pitcher's card. It's 77. It's going to fall within the out range. You look at the two, the green, and that is a comebacker right at Limblad. And he throws out. He throws out Epstein one away. Sal Bando is up. Sal Bando today is one for three, two runs scored. And that's a 17. That should be a base on balls, and it is. Sal Bando walks all the time at a 380 on base percentage. Here's Rick Monday, Paul Limblad, the pitch. That's a 12, and that is a base on balls, back-to-back -back walks. Some movement in the in the uh, bullpen. It looks like Casey Cox out there in the bullpen. Here's Dave Duncan. Dave Duncan's had a good day. He's three for three with a home run, two singles, driven in three runs, and has a walk. Here's a pitch. And that's a 28. A 28 is going to be a defensive check, so we're going to roll again. And it's a 67. 67 is going to be to the second baseman, Tim Cullen. And a 67. And I know he's a five because I already looked it up. So that's going to be a fielder's choice. Four, six, fielder's choice. So first and third now, two outs. And Larry Brown is up. All right, Larry Brown gets his second at bat, and his first at bat, what did he do? He singled in his first at bat. And here's a pitch to Larry Brown from, say, 97. Almost, if it would be a 98 or a 99, it would be an event check. Um, so it's a 97, and that's going to be an out. An eight is a fly ball right field. Larry Bittner under it, and he puts it away to retire the side. So a couple left, no no runs and no hits. They leave a couple on the walks. And we go to the top of the ninth inning. I'm going to see a new pitcher for the athletics. I want to do the, the whole um, tired thing again. So let's, let's just grab a, a pitcher here who, you know what, we'll bring in Raleigh Fingers. He wasn't really a major closer. He did have 17 saves. Let's bring somebody else. Let's bring Bob Locker. Locker appeared in 47 games. So Locker comes in to finish this off. And he will be facing a pinch hitter. And that's going to be, who did I say I needed to grab before? Oh, man, I can't remember his name. Wait, hold on. If I see it, I'll probably remember it. I want to use somebody they were using during these games. Hold on, let me, let me go back. Let me go back into the... They use the guy named uh, McCraw. The Claw McCraw. Again, you get every, every player, you know, so it's good if you play actual lineups and you want to use guys that, that were on the fringes that really had a few of bats. 
I like doing that. You know, I don't know. It just makes it fun for me to have these these no name guys show up and maybe get a hit. So I'm looking for McCraw. Sometimes they're not in there because I haven't gone to the team that the oh there he is, Tommy McCraw, and he is a specialist. So it's good that he bats against a righty because if the, if Locker was a lefty, he would uh, Tommy McCraw would be at a big disadvantage. So McCraw is going to come in to pinch hit here in the bottom of the ninth. And here's the pitch from Bob Locker. Bob Locker was pretty good, 286 ERA with a 7-2 and two, one loss record. It's going to be a 99, so if there was somebody on base, that would be a wild pitch. And I'm writing it into everybody until I get the new cards. He's updating all the cards. So then that could be an event check, it's called, event check. So a 99 and a 2 is off the pitcher's card, and that is a ball that's hit in front of the plate, and Locker gets to it right ahead of the catcher, Duncan. And fires the first and in time to get McCraw, who is very fast. So it's 1-3 if you're keeping score at home, which you should be. Anytime I do one of these, make sure you keep score. And I'll you know send it to me, I'll sign it, and I'll send it back to you so you have my autograph. Uh, top of the ninth, Dell Unser, 77. That's going to be an out. And we're going to say that's a zero. That's line and caught. Oh, Bando, Sal Bando. Snags it out of the air. And here's Bernie Allen, the guy I thought was playing second base. And he was really a – he's a third baseman with a two. And uh, and here's the pitch. So this is probably the final out. They're down to their last out. That's a 0-5, and that's the line. Base hit right to center field. So 9-2 to two ball game. Bernie Allen doesn't want to quit. And up comes Don Mincher. Don Mincher is three for three with a walk. Here's a pitch from Locker. That's a 17, and a 17 is going to be ball four. He walks. Runners on first and second. Very slow. So, all right. And uh, it's Frank Howard. Let's see what happens. First and second, two outs. Top of the ninth, 9-2 nine athletics. That's a 60, it looks like a 69. 69 is going to be strike three, ball game over. Frank Howard swings and misses at an outside pitch. And that's the ball game, folks. Yes, sir. No runs. One hit, a couple left. The Athletics improved their record to 37 and 24. And the Washington Senators dropped to 22 and 36. The win's going to go to Dobson. Locker does not get a credit for a save or anything like that. Final score is 9-2. to two. And the MVP, I guess it would have to be Dobson, who went eight innings. Gave up uh, – and let's, let's move this over so you can see the scorecard a little bit before I say goodbye. So here you got um, the scorecard. And, um, and Chuck Dobson. All right, Chuck Dobson, not the Pat Dobson. Chuck Dobson gave up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, that was a home run, nine, ten hits in eight innings. A couple of runs, both earned. How many did he walk? He walked one there. He walked another there. Got a wild pitch. Three, four. Oh, no, three walks. Strikeouts, probably not too many because this wasn't he was not a strikeout guy. That's two strikeouts, three strikeouts. Did have a wild pitch. How many batters did he face? He faced 35 batters. No hit by pitch. But he gets the win. Uh, let me look and see what his record is now. I can see that I got all the stats. I'm gonna input this into replay baseball PC game. That uh, keeps all my stats for me. What man, I, I I don't know what I'd do without without that that PC game. My life would be miserable trying to keep all these stats. I would spend more time keeping stats than playing all the games I play. All right, so uh, let's see. Chuck Dobson. His record is five and three. This game started, so he's going to be six and three now. His ERA before this game was. It was 267, so it goes down a little bit, probably around 240. Remember, or 250, remember he had a two, 
286 ERA, right? No, or uh, let me see. What was his? His ERA was 381, so he's pitching better. But he did have a great uh, one loss record. He had a one loss record of 15 and five right here. He's six and three and with a 381 ERA. So he's pitching better than he did in actuality. But that, you know, that could change. There could be two or three games where he gets beat up. He gets hammered a little bit and that all the numbers will change. So this is deep drive baseball, guys. If you have any questions, um, reach out to me. I play this a lot and I really enjoy it. This is a two game series between the Washington Senators. I almost said Nationals. The Washington Senators and the uh, Oakland Athletics. I'm replaying the 71 Oakland Athletics. I'm having a blast. Um, I played Tom Seaver's 71 season two and a half, no, one and a half times, and I have to finish the second time around. Um, it's still in my in, in the system, so I'm okay. I can go always pull out the cards and go back there when I'm in the Seaver mood again. Uh, but I'm always in the Seaver mood. But you know that's that's what the Turbo Charge Sports. There he is. All right, let's see. Uh, Tony Bittner was already in second on Harris grounded to Campy. Let me see. On Har Oh, wait, he was on second? I had him on first in that inning right there. Oh, wait, he went to – oh, yeah, you're right. Ah, you're right. So instead – that would have been a six uh, instead of a six four it would have been a six three and the runner holes. Okay, you're right. Sometimes that happens. I get more involved in what I'm talking about than I I, I do in the games, in the, you know, in, into running the the game. I I do that a lot. That's why I, a lot of times to focus on the game I don't look at the screen, and it seems like I'm ignoring people, but but I'm not doing that. But uh, yeah, you're right about that. So Bittner already had moved to second on the ground ball to first, so he was the second base. For some reason, I thought he was still at first. And, uh, but no no harm done because Tim Cullen made no difference. Tim Cullen popped up, and Toby Hara grounded it out. So that, that where the guys are on base makes really no difference in this game. If he's on first, an out is an out, and so forth. So, yeah, I fixed that. But, yeah, it's okay. Not the end of the world. It was a blowout game, so I don't really – not a big deal. Whatever happens, happens. But those are – you know, I haven't played this in a while. I came back today. haven't played this probably in six weeks. I've been playing a lot of 4th Street baseball, trying to get that down. And that is – you know, that has a lot of meat on it, on its bones, I'll tell you. Check out 4th Street baseball. That's a blast. But uh, check out that card compared to this card. you got to look at the combination, the difference. This is the 4th Street card, right? This is Howie Kendrick. And this is the, a batter – this is a batter with the deep drive card. <laughs> so it's two different worlds, man. And I really have to be careful because look how small everything is. You know, but, but what I do is I have this really powerful light and I put my light right here. And then I kind of look at it and I really take my time and I point it out with a pen like that. It has even, you can even play with a count. It has a lot of information. Watch watch my videos. I'm going to play in a little while in about an hour. So I'm going to play another um a fourth street baseball game and then i'll probably play a, a, a strat game tonight uh, i don't know who i have going tonight with my 77 replay with the mets i don't know how far i'll get but it's just a reason to play strat somebody sent me that set of cards thank you very much for that gift and that's this is cp cards and dice this is tony porter reach out to me uh thanks for checking in and saying hello and uh check out uh my latest thing or project is fourth street baseball it's a lot of fun as well but deep drive baseball is definitely a diamond in the rough. Guys who are not talking about deep drive baseball are really missing out, especially the APA guys who, uh, you know, who want like more, like they want a little bit more depth. They want a little bit, uh, uh, they want all the players. They want a little bit more depth. This is $12 for the whole season. Or you can pay, you can get every card from APA and pay $150 or $140, whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? And and it's the, it's the same thing. Where's my, where's my APA set? Wait, I'll show you right here. I have Apple. I'm playing tons of Apple. I love Apple. But look, it's a lot. The cards are a lot. Remind me a lot of Apple's cards. Look, Catfish Hunter. Catfish, Catfish Hunter there. And Catfish Hunter here. Wait a second. Blah, blah, blah. There he is. So, yeah. So, it's not unlike. I mean, it's clean. It's crisp. 
I like the fact these these font are nice and thick and bigger. I like that. I wish more companies would do that, but it does waste a little bit more ink. But this was, I mean, Appa is, is, is the best for that, you know. But if you want something that's close to Appa but has every single player, and if you're on a budget, if you're retired, you're on a budget, you don't want to spend, you know, all the money, but you want to play re replay actual lineups, you go for deep drive baseball. It doesn't have all the seasons like Appa does. That's the thing. So you're going to have to really squeeze the juice. You're going to have to take lemons and make lemonade. And what I mean is that if there's only 71, you're going to have to play 71. You can't play, you know, with Apple, you can play anything you want, but you have to pay for it. If you want every player with Apple, you got to play at least upwards of 120, 140 dollars. And uh, come on, look, I mean, there's nothing there. I mean, a lot of guys like advanced Apple. I'm not into that because it's too much, too overwhelming for me. You know, my brain explodes. Um, so anyway. I, you know, if you like Appa, like I do, this is great. This reminds me a lot of Appa. It's real straightforward. It has a little bit of strat because it's two cards. It has a pitcher and a, a batter influence. It's got a little uh, status pro if you like status pro because it goes, it goes like, you know, single walk, hit by a pitch, strikeout. You know, it, it's kind of like status pro does. And I got to play status pro again. I haven't played that in a while. That's a lovely game. I love that game. Very simple, straightforward. It gives you a fun time. Anyway, Cards and Dice TV. Tony Porter, thanks for watching. See you later. I will be back with more stuff. Watch my channel, subscribe, and uh, keep rolling.